The book we decided to choose to represent in our model was Wombat Stew, and these are the three pages we took inspiration from. We began by creating a rough sketch of what scene we wanted to create. At this point in time, we didn't know how we wanted to incorporate the electrical system or the pneumatics in the scene. Some things that we changed within our final product was we added more characters, changed the position of the dingo, added a compartment for the electrical system and added a big sign at the top. The diorama included pneumatics and an electrical system. We decided to incorporate these systems as they are child friendly and easily replaceable if broken. The systems are also a perfect fit for the scene that we achieved as using a system like cams may not have offered the same result. The model itself has a secret compartment at the front which perfectly hides and stores the battery pack and wires. It also allows for room for the glow to sit as it wouldn't have worked as well with a flat base. When you push the air through the pneumatic system, the wombat moves forward, hitting a button to switch on the light. The light flickers underneath the fireplace, which creates a flickering fire effect. Underneath the wombat is a paper clip wrapped around wires. When pushed forward, this allowed the wombat to be more identifiable when hitting the push pin to close the circuit. For our project, we tried our hardest to try and use materials we already had and only bought things we really needed. Our budget was around $10 and allowed us to purchase the mini cauldron, the clay and the moss used to replicate leaves on the tree. The materials used that we already owned include the paints, stones, cotton balls, food dye, cardboard box, glue, sticks, blue tack and gum nuts. We tried to be as sustainable as possible when sourcing materials to lessen the effect the diorama has on the environment. I hand sculpted each character out of polymer clay or modelling clay with tools such as a toothpick and paintbrush to make grooves or fire lines in the clay. Each character was then painted by hand with attention to the detail of the colours in the book. To make the detail on the platypus's hat, I painted egg carton and then glued it onto fishing line and onto the hat using super glue. Our ultimate goal for this assignment was to completely stay away from the use of sticky tape as a joining technique, and we did. We were able to achieve this by sourcing a range of easily accessible joining materials and making use of what we had. Super glue was used to attach rocks to the base, putting the syringe into place, gluing details onto the hat and the clay platypus, and constructing the support beam on top of the box. We also used other types of glue, such as PVA, for the tree and the gum nuts, and a glue stick for the signs and coloured paper on the exterior of the diorama. The only non-glue joining technique material used was a piece of electrical tape, which enabled us to cover a hole in the back wall. However, the tape was not sticky tape and was not used multiple times, hence sticking by our promise. To make the bugs, we first used clay to make circles and a worm shape. We then used a toothpick to poke holes in each of the designs to allow for the fishing line to go through. We then waited for them to dry and then painted them rainbow to brighten up the display and drew bugs using a black pen. We threaded on the fishing line and knotted between the bugs for spacing. After that, small holes were poked in the top of the box using toothpicks allowing for spacing between each of the fishing lines. We then threaded the fishing line bugs through the holes at the top and tied a big knot at the back to make sure they didn't fall down. We then cut off the excess fishing line and covered the top few holes with the sign so that children couldn't get to them. Throughout the production, we continually evaluated our design and its suitability within the classroom. We ensured that the circuits were embedded successfully and functioned together. The final product links to the design and technology curriculum area investigate how forces and the properties of materials affect the behaviour of a product or system. We planned times to catch up and create our model. We shared tasks that related to our strengths. For example, Brooke created the clay animals as she was stronger in the modelling area. Personally, my strong point is filming, so I took a lot more of the footage. We were able to share tasks, ideas and materials and worked as a team to complete the final working model on time. 
In terms of management, to begin the process, we planned out the design and divided up tasks based on our personal strengths. We managed our time well by organising many catch-ups and persisted in taking footage so we had enough time for the final video. Overall, our product is suitable for classroom use and could be used to teach students about electrical systems, pneumatics and sustainability within the design and technology curriculum.